So I'm going to show you a quick, how do I debug failing tests example? Because having more examples that you can see are important because learning how to debug is a skill. It's one we develop and get used to over time. So let's have a look. We have a test here. The first, I mean, it's failing. So the first thing we have to do is see why it's failing. So let me just run this. Now, if you were trying to set this test up, you would have uh, probably new Firefox driver because you wouldn't be using the same driver setup that I've got. This essentially just starts up a Firefox browser. So assume that this code here is just instantiating a new Firefox driver. That's all it does. This is the test here. We navigate to a page, then we try and find some elements, then assert on them. This is what we're trying to debug. So if I just run this, this is set up to use portable Firefox. But if you're doing this, it will just be the normal Firefox. The browser is not the important thing here. So we've got a failing test and the test is failing because we're unable to locate the element pname8. So that's this part here. Now what makes this difficult is that we are chaining find elements. This type of fluent approach can make debugging difficult because essentially we can put a breakpoint on the line but nowhere else, right? Unless we do that, in which case I have this fluent statement which is split up into a number of different lines and I will break point on this one. So let me debug the test now. So the test has stopped, it hasn't crashed yet because we're about to do the, the P name 8. And if I step over it should crash. There we go. So that's just an example of that when we're debugging fluent statements we can put break points on any of these lines. But that's not really going to help us. So what we need to do is let's do this by hand first. If I get browser up, that's the same page that's in the test. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to repeat the test manually. So what I have to do is I have to inspect the element. Now in here, I can find things. I can do a control F and that will allow me to find. And you see that I can find by string or by selector or by XPath. So I'm going to put in the selector that we're using here. So this is first of all is by ID A8. So let's do by ID A8. And it's highlighted that. So then the next thing is P name 8. Well, I can see that when I find ID A8, I've already found the thing that is name P name 8. So if I do a find element to find elements underneath this element, it's not going to find anything. So that is why that find by name p name 8 is failing because we've already found the element and there is no element there's no child element under this with the name p name 8 similarly there is no element underneath there's a tag a because we've already found it all of these are the same id a8 is the same as finding name p name 8 which would be the same as um, finding id p8 and then the a underneath it so the actual bug is quite simple. The process of debugging it is what's important. Splitting up the fluent statements so that we can breakpoint them. Repeating the same actions in the browser. Previously we'd have to use something like Firefox and Firepath, but the browsers have advanced. We can now use the search features built into the developer tools, certainly in Chrome, to search for CSS selectors and XPath. And that works quite well now. So this is a skill we have to develop over time. But whenever you have problems, learn to use the breakpoint. We also have to learn how to evaluate. So if I debug this. So breakpoint there. So what I can do now is I know that this works, right? Because we've got to this point. So I can evaluate this expression. And I know that this is going to evaluate back to something. So what I can then do is I can do the whole statement. Find element by dot name. And then we repeat the exception. This process of evaluation is important. Once you break point, you go into evaluate mode to experiment. Because this point, you're not going to cause anything to break. Any exceptions are going to be captured here. It's not going to interrupt with the flow of your test. These are skills we have to develop. 
I mean, no doubt I'll create other videos that have examples of this because we have to keep going over this until we um, learn how to do an experiment with it. But these are important skills to learn. Learn how to break point, learn how to debug, learn how to evaluate, learn how to use the built-in features in the browser to explore the statements that we've written. Okay, quick example, hope that helps.